In this video, we're going to talk about why you might need or want a physical print copy of your book, also known as a proof copy or a paperback copy. And then I'm going to show you three different print on demand companies that you can use to make this proof copy and what I think of each of them. Okay, so first of all, why would you need them? There are three different reasons that I found that I need or want a proof copy of my book. The first reason is, of course, to proofread or edit that book. Um, and so I like to do this towards the end of my process, like the very final step, like an actual proofreading step. But you could also order your book as early as the first draft. If you just want to read and edit it in a different format, it's actually cheaper than ordering a book from Office Max, depending on which one of the options I show you that you go with. Of course, if you want to edit it that way that early on, you might not have a cover ready just yet. So I will also show you how you can make a temporary cover using KDP and some templates. The second reason that you might want a print company is so that you can make an ARC, which is an advanced reader copy to give to someone else, like say other people who want to proofread for you or for marketing purposes like um, book reviewers and that sort of thing. And then the third reason is to make an arc, but specifically for giveaways. Actually, I would even add in like a fourth reason, which would be like if you want to just have your book in your hand for marketing purposes, like if you're not great at Photoshop and you can't like fake that you're holding your book and you want to actually hold your book for like pictures and videos and whatnot, um, then yeah that would be a fantastic reason as well. If you're ordering a proof so that you can proofread or edit your book, then obviously you're going to care more about the interior. And if you're ordering it for like marketing purposes, you'll obviously care more about the exterior and the cover. And if you're ordering it for like arcs and to like give to people as more of a final copy, then you're obviously going to care about both of those things. So it really depends on what you're wanting for which of these companies I'm going to talk about that you go with. So let's dive into the three different companies. I'm going to talk to you about KDP, which is an Amazon owned company, and it recently merged with Create Space. If any of you are familiar with that, um, it is probably my number one in most instances, but not necessarily when it comes to proofs. I'm also going to talk to you about Ingram Spark, and then I'm going to talk to you about Barnes and Noble Nook Press, which is a bit newer to me, but I have really enjoyed using it. So I just want to talk to you guys about the pros and cons of each and how it might influence your decision. Um, before I dive into each of the different platforms, I just want to say that I am not going to show you guys how to actually upload your book and go through the entire process for all three of these companies because I already did that. I have a video on how to upload your book to KDP, which I will link below. And I also have a video all about how to upload your book to Ingram Spark, which I will link below as well. Those are both in my final steps to publishing playlist if you guys are curious. I have not done a video on how to upload to Barnes & Noble uh, Nook Press, but it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, I'm brand new to it and I just follow the directions, so. If you know how to follow directions, you'll be fine. But I'm going to go into this assuming that you can figure out the basics for how to set up your book on these different platforms. And I'm just going to show you um, the pros and cons of each one. And then I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can actually get a temporary cover for your book if you don't have one yet and you want to make a proof copy. All right, your first option for ordering proofs is Kindle Direct Publishing right here. And this is probably my favorite publishing or print on demand company most of the time, but in the case of proofs, not so much. And I will go into that in a second. Um, so I'm again going to assume that you know how to upload a book, that you know to go to paperback and complete all the setup. And so we're going to start with uh, once your book is actually set up, there's these three little dots. So you have to complete the details, content, rights and pricing, etc., which I haven't done yet for the Stolen Kingdom at the time of this video. So I'm going to scroll down and use, let's use Evelyn's number. So on this book, you can see because it is ready to go that there's actually two options. There's request printed proofs and there is request author copies. So once your book is actually published, you will get the option to request author copies, which is your book 
at cost versus the price online that other people have to pay. This will not be an option until your book is actually published. Prior to publishing, you will only have this option. And while the author copies look exactly like the finished book, on KDP, the printed proofs have a long, gross bar across the front and back and spine that says, not for resale. And it's disgusting. It covers the entire cover and pretty much ruins absolutely every cover that ever existed. <laughs> um, it's horrible. Everybody that I know hates it. Um, and for whatever reason, there's no way around it at this time. They also on the back have a strange barcode that is different from when you get the author copy in the copies that go out into the world. They have a proof only barcode and it's placed in a different position and they let you know all of this um, if you read the fine print that it's just the proof barcode and it's unique to a proof but it's still frustrating because it covers different parts of the book than the actual barcode covers so just altogether I am not impressed with the proofs on KDP but if you are going to order one and you want to order one for maybe proofreading um, not marketing purposes basically anything where you're more concerned about the interior and you just want to see how the book turns out. Once you click on the proof option, you're going to see that there's an order quantity and the maximum that you can order is five ever at a time. So keep that in mind. Like if you're, even if you don't care about the not for resale bar, maybe you want that because you want it to be really clear that it's not the final. Um, great, but you can still only order up to five at a time. So you're going to need to keep this in mind. I think you have to resubmit your book every time that you want to order another five copies. And unfortunately, that's not always ideal. And then there actually is a way to divide up the addresses. Like if you wanted to um, send, you know, five to five different people, um, you can do that on the Amazon ordering page. In general, that's just an Amazon thing that they'll allow you to split your order between addresses. So that's not a huge concern. Um, and then it will show you the total cost for the book itself. This is not counting shipping and taxes, so it is going to be more expensive than that. Once you're ready to go and you're sure you want this, you're just going to click the submit proof request and then you'll get an email once they approve it. Usually they say within four hours. It's pretty fast. And this is how you get a proof on KDP. Now, one thing I have noticed about KDP that's different from every other print-on-demand company is that they don't really care if your proof is perfect they're most likely going to approve this proof whether it looks good or not. So I got a proof where the words were almost chopped off on the side, but then when it came to actually um, publishing, the day of publishing, and submitting that same cover, they did not approve it and they were not okay with it. So this is not unfortunately the same as CreateSpace and Ingram Spark, where once it's approved, you know the book's good to go. It's really just you're going to get a copy and they're going to give you whatever you order. And so again, that's a downside as well as the resale, um, not for resale, barcode, everything. So this is not my favorite way to order proofs um, besides for proof reading. Uh, for proof reading, it's great because it's probably the easiest place to order a proof and all the other <laughs> options that I'm going to go over today are a little bit more difficult. So the next one I'm going to go over is Ingram Spark. Um, this is my Ingram Spark page. And as you can see, the Stolen Kingdom is pending publisher approval. So I need to click into that. Again, I have a video on how to actually upload your book to Ingram Spark. So if you need help with that, go watch that video. I'm not going into it again today. But my goal here with Ingram Spark is to set up pre-orders. I really, really, really want to get the paperback pre-orders going before BookCon because I have um, some really cool flyers that are going to promote the pre-orders and I would love it if it's more than just ebooks. So I am on deadline to get this going. My cover designer has not answered me. This is the final front cover, but I'm still waiting on the back and the spine, which is like the full wrap as they call it. Um, and she hasn't answered me in over a week. So I'm a little bit frustrated about that, but it is what it is. So I actually made um, a full cover wrap myself. It's crappy, but it will do the trick to let me um, complete pre-orders, which right now is my ultimate goal with this. And so I will show you in a second how to do that and make um, a wrap using KDP. But for right now, at least it can get pre-orders going and that's what matters to me. So the proof has been generated. I'm going to take a look at that today. And then as soon as I approve it, I'm sorry, 
This is when Lightning Spark, aka Ingram Spark, approves it. But now I have to go approve it myself. And so it's pending publisher approval. Once I do that, they're going to begin sending out all the information to the retailers. So like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Books Depository and all these great places are going to start getting information for how people can pre-order the Stolen Kingdom, which is so exciting. Um, and so this is separate from ebook pre-orders. This is how I do my paperback pre-orders. But now let's go into how I'm actually going to order my paperback arc, I believe, because um, I don't really know if I want to order from Ingram Spark. I've heard that Barnes & Noble Nook Press is really fast. So this, my friends, is Barnes & Noble Nook Press. So I am not actually selling books online through this. I am only using it for my um, arcs. And this is my workaround for when I'm not ready to upload to Ingram Spark but I also don't want to use KDP because of their stupid barcode across the front cover. So if I have, like for instance, say I had a full cover wrap, but I wasn't ready to put my book on Ingram Spark just yet, then I could create a new book here, paperback or ebook, doesn't matter. Um, and you can do it just for yourself to purchase, which is why this says personal here. Or you could actually um, sell books through Barnes & Noble Nook Press as well. All I have to do, I've never done this before, you guys, I'm super excited, is just order it. Let's find out how much this actually costs though. I put in my shipping information and I chose the delivery option that would be just the simplest, the cheapest, which apparently is a lot more than I expected. So maybe this isn't rivaling Ingram Spark all that much. So it looked cheap. It looked like it was only six bucks, but then there is another six fifty for the handling and shipping. So it is a total of about $14. All right. Out of curiosity, I did decide to go and check out how much Ingram Spark would cost since the Barnes and Noble one was fairly expensive actually. Um, KDP, by the way, is like usually under $10. Um, if the book is a bit thicker, it might be around 10 you know, the most I've ever spent was like, oh gosh, maybe like 12 bucks on a proof copy through KDP. So Barnes & Noble seemed expensive to me. Let's find out how much Ingram Spark is. How quickly would you like it ordered? Um, it says usually prints within five business days. I automatically choose this option, which as you can see, costs more than the Barnes & Noble book by itself, like fully. Um, the shipping and the book itself this is just shipping. So if I go to basic, um, what they're going to tell me, yes, if you select this method, we are not responsible for loss and or damage. So you have to accept that number one, it's not trackable, um, not insurable. And once they send it out, they don't really care if it gets to you or not. I haven't had any issues with this yet and I've always done basic, but of course I wouldn't be surprised if something went wrong. The other thing that you'll notice is that because this book isn't published yet, it is like this yellow bar that makes you choose. You can click the override on sale date, which is what I need to do if I want to get this book anytime soon. Let's scroll down here and we've got a handling fee of $2.00. Subtotal $7.59 plus the shipping. So our total is $11.39. So it turns out that it really does depend on which shipping option you choose. If you're willing to take the risk, Ingram Spark is slightly cheaper. And of course, that's not counting, you know, uploading the book itself, which is $50. So let's be realistic here. Um, this is only an option if you're wanting to do pre orders. If you're wanting to just get an art copy, definitely don't recommend that because this would actually be. Um, 61.39 counting that uploading fee. All right, so I'm gonna return to my bookshelf on KDP and show you guys how to make a book cover. And good news, KDP helps you with all of these things. It is so amazing, which is why I always recommend that new authors start with KDP because this is the most friendly to self-publishing by far. Um, but let's go ahead and click on the creating your own cover. And you're gonna find that in the cover creator, they actually have templates right here for paperback. And so you can select the size of the book that you want. You can tell them how many pages you have in it, which actually is super important for the spine. So make sure that you are putting in the page count for the book that you're actually going to order and get that solidified before you download a template. And then you can even pick um, the color paper, which, you know, heck if I know if that matters at all. But I downloaded this template for a five by eight inch book, which is what I wanted to order. And then I went through and I had to click the, uh, where is it? 
edit PDF button and then you can actually go and change all of this. So I deleted most everything. First I put in my front cover, then I started deleting things, then I put in the spine info and this info and then I finished deleting everything because as you can see in this little box below it says turn off the guidelines because everything that's in there is going to show. Um, whatever is vis visible in digital artwork will also be visible in your printed artwork. So I created this super lame <laughs> full cover wrap so that basically this front cover looks realistic for Ingram Spark. And then literally, I told you guys, it's so basic. And I could have done more. I have a little experience on Canva, so I considered just making something simple on Canva for this and something for the spine and overlapping them. And if my cover designer doesn't get back to me soon, Maybe I will. I'm going to give her a couple more days because this is just so I can upload to Ingram Spark. And I use this template not only for over here on Kindle Direct Publishing, but I also use it for Barnes and Noble and Ingram Spark. And both other companies accepted it. So I think this template is actually really awesome, you guys. KDP has such great just such great information for self-published authors. I can't recommend them enough. You don't want to use the template if that's too confusing or you just don't have like the Adobe Acrobat DC that I use um, and so you're not able to do that. You can also use, on KDP at least, the cover creator. So I was uploading a cover I already had, but let's check out using the cover creator instead. And so this is going to literally give you very limited options, but it will do it for you, which is really nice. So as you can see here, I picked a really basic design when I was playing with this just to see if I liked it, which actually I like it better than the one that I made with the template because I like the black and I like the um, font choices and the way that they placed um, an image here, which I think is supposed to be an author photo, but whatever. Um, so I really like that because it's actually a little bit more correctly placed, but I, um, when I clicked preview and I took a picture of it, it just wasn't quite up to par for putting it on Ingram Spark. So you definitely could create a cover within here, um, try to upload it to Barnes & Noble. Um, so what I did is I just took a screenshot of this and I tried it, but it didn't quite fit um, the cover. As you can see, the spine is a little wonky and actually I believe the spine starts right about here. So there was this black bar. So anyway, I ended up going with the template, but you can start by choosing a design. And I chose obviously this one. Um, and because it's only one picture that I uploaded, it's putting it in the middle, but they actually, like if you jump into this before you've uploaded a picture, it will show you what designs look like without any picture. Um, and they have not that many, it's pretty limited, but they have some that as you can see are just like a very simple background, pretty cheesy, pretty lame. Like I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, if you're going to do this, you could at least go into the website Canva and make like a pretty front cover so that you could choose a design where you have a front cover image in there already. Um, and then you would just add your blurb and I put in just like connect with me here um, and the title and my name. But you honestly can do whatever you want because in this instance, you're probably ordering a proof just for the sake of ordering a proof. All right, let's summarize. So KDP is the cheapest option by far. Um, they have templates that are built in. They're super user friendly. So that's the upside. But then the downside is it has these obnoxious not for resale bars across every single proof. And there is no way to get around this. So not for resale. And it covers usually kind of a crucial part, like it goes around the whole thing, spine, front and back, and it's just super dang ugly. <laughs> so this is horrible for marketing purposes. I personally can't stand it looking at it in general, um, but it's useful for actually proofreading. So you'll notice that if I hold this up close, you can see all my proofreading notes within this book. I would say this is fantastic for proofreading and editing, and it's actually cheaper to order through KDP than to print your book at Office Max. So why not, right? Um, so then let's go to Ingram Spark, which is the second cheapest option 
if you're willing to take the risk that we talked about with shipping. Um, otherwise, it is by far the most expensive option if you choose the shipping that they want you to choose, and especially if you count the uploading fee, which I do, so that makes it actually over $50 more than both of the other options, and therefore the most expensive by far. So that's a huge negative there. However, a huge positive is that, of course, it allows you to do paperback pre-orders as long as you don't mind paying to upload twice. It's hard to say how I feel about this, honestly. I think for me, it ends up being worth it. Um, I would actually, if I only chose between Ingram Spark and KDP, I would choose to use Ingram Spark for proofs for anything marketing purposes, for any gifts and giveaways, um, for book reviewers, etc. Because this bar is pretty much a deal breaker for me. <laughs> Sorry, KDP, but you got to get rid of that. Like if they didn't have this bar, I would definitely choose KDP first, but and that leads to the last one, Barnes & Noble. Um, it is more expensive than I expected, but you don't have to pay for uploading it like you do with Ingram Spark. And they seem to be okay with crappy covers, which as I showed you guys, I made a really crappy cover just to test it out. And as long as your text doesn't go too far out into the margins where there's like a danger zone and they'll let you know, um, they seem to be fine with it. So I would say that if I wanted ARCs, and I wasn't ready to upload to Ingram Spark. I wasn't ready to pay the fee, and I wasn't ready to set up, you know, pre-orders or any of that. I would definitely use Barnes and Noble above the other two because it's it seems like it's a beautiful book. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments if this was like helpful. The next video I want to talk about in this series is actually ebook arcs and sending those to people's Kindle um, or to your Kindle or to a friend or a spouse or a CP or a beta's Kindle, you name it. We're gonna talk about how to actually create like an ebook version of your book. Um, so that people can read that in advance and that my friend is free. So I will be back with that shortly. I say shortly because I don't actually know when this video is coming out just yet, but I'm filming a lot of these in advance and I'm filming on a lot of fun topics that you guys have voted for and that my patrons have voted for. So if you want a certain topic, definitely comment below, but know that my patrons get first priority. So if you really, really want a topic, go and find me on Patreon. The links are in the description box below. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that by the time this video comes out, there will be pre-orders available for The Stolen Kingdom, which is so, so exciting. And you guys, if you haven't pre-ordered this already, definitely go check it out and see if you want to read it because I'm very excited about it. All the links are below to the launch page, the pre-order page, my website. I actually have chapter sneak peeks for you guys. If you want to go and read a little bit about the book, you can do that on my website below. Um, oh my gosh, that's terrifying. I think that's everything I have for you guys today. So I hope you have an amazing day and I will be back soon with another video on self-publishing. Oh, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up to support my channel and then subscribe below and ring the bell next to the subscription button so that you get notified every time I have a new video, such as a video on self-publishing. Hey. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have for you guys today. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. But three different print on command, print on command. Hmm. Screwed it up. <laughs>